Hello and welcome back to Hop to the Top. And today, we need some wins. We desperately need some wins. I feel like I say that every single episode now, but we, we really do need wins today. We are playing against Toon and Zurich, who are 9th and 10th in the division. If we can't beat these two, then we are in a very difficult situation. Now, since last episode, we have had a bit of a situation, and that situation is... We can't score goals, essentially. That's the, the biggest issue. Uh, you were last here for the 0-0 draw with Logano and then the 3-0 win over Luzerne. Since then, four games and we've scored none. We had a 2-0 loss to Young Boys, which was, again, quite annoying. Where's my uh, fixture, my, my tactics bit gone from here? I swear I had... I swear there were tactics on here at some point. Oh, they are. They're just all the way down here for some reason. I got very confused by that then. Get get back down here. The Tuna lost to Young Boys. We actually changed formation for that one. We had four defenders, a defensive midfielder, four midfielders, and a striker. Even that didn't work, parking the bus against them. So we still lost 2-0 there. I don't think we're ever going to beat Young Boys this season, unfortunately. After that, though, we had a very disappointing 1-0 loss to Servette, who at the time were seventh or eighth in the table so quite far down which was really annoying and then we've had two nil nil draws in a row one to Sion, another draw with Sion, and then a nil nil draw with Basel, which actually isn't too bad because Basel are a decent side. As I say though, Toon and Zurich coming up in today's episode, they're ninth and tenth respectively. We've got to beat them. Despite the bad form, we are somehow still in fourth position. Luzerne have got away from us a little bit, but St. Garland and Lugano have caught right up to us. However, both of them are failing to take their opportunities to overtake us in the league. St. Garland, for example, uh, they have drawn lots of games recently, so they've been dropping points massively as we have, I suppose, as well. And then Logano as well, they have also been drawing, although they were a bit further behind, so they've actually made up more ground than it looks actually, I suppose. So it's getting very tight with six games to go this season. We just have to win every single game and then we'll be fine for European qualification into the European Conference League. Mental as well how Ben Khalifa scored 11 goals in like the first nine league games of a season and is still the third top goal scorer in the league apparently. That's crazy. So I suppose all we have to do is just jump straight into today's games then. Fructal stays in goal as per usual with a backline of Boone, Baba, Gonzalo and Aragon. Baba is going to be leaving, I think at the end, well, I'd say at the end of the season. I want to sell him at the end of the season. He's got a contract till 2023. He's not going to be in around the first team next season. I just decided he's, he's just not good enough. However, everyone else keeps keeps getting injured. Svetkovic, he never gets injuries for that long, but he gets them literally like the day before a game, for example. So he's missed a few games this season because of little niggles and injuries and things like that. He just come back from one, but it's on the bench today. He's, his contract, by the way, ends at the end of the season. He's definitely going at the end of the season. And then playing at right back today is Aragorn, who is another player that I kind of want to... I want to just remodel that back line. That back line is kind of the issue I've got. I'd love to get Gonzalo back again next season, but I don't think we're going to get him back next season because I think Benfica will want him playing elsewhere. But he does get a lot of good top-level football here, and if we do get European football, they might let him come back. Hosu and Bernardo make up that midfield partnership because uh, if we look down here, Bajrami suspended, which isn't particularly good, and Alan. I don't know, he's just not really played well this season. 6.65 average rating. He's still got five-star potential. He just might have to go on loan next season, I think. The attacking midfield is still a little bit undecided. We need to get better players than Pusic and Sukachev in next season. Sukachev's uh, potential has dropped down to three and a half star. Uh, I think Pusic is four, four star potential and he's dropped down to two and a half star credibility. I think we spoke about that last episode. But we need to get some better wingers in next season. Morandi... I'm still very undecided on Morandi as well. Last season, he was incredible. This season, a bit meh. The fact that we've got two really good attacking midfielders coming through in Randy Schneider and Alex Smith, it makes me think we sh maybe we just try and cash in. He's valued at 2.6 million. If someone comes in from over summer and bids more than his value, he's probably going to be going. I and mean, then up front, well, up front is just a disaster at the moment. Adam Ida, since coming in, has scored one goal. Uh, but Joe Gellhart has been here all season. He's only got four goals. So it is a little bit crap, basically. I just don't know what to do up front. It's an issue. But we'll stick with Ida today because I think he's the lesser of the two evils, really, from thinking about it. So that's what we're sticking with. Now, as kickoff is upon us and there's an opening highlight of the game, just want to say a massive thank you to the newest Patreon, Dave Millington. Thank you very much for your donations. Just as I was about to record this episode, the email came through saying, you've got a new Patreon. So brilliant stuff. Thank you ever so much for your donation, mate. Really appreciated. And hopefully celebrating your your new new donation to the patreon we're going to score a goal to celebrate that as sukachev 
maybe he's not a fan of Dave Millington. I think that's probably the issue. And that's why we need to get rid of Sukachev because he's not. He's, he doesn't like my Patreons. Clearly, he's got an issue with them for some reason. So that's why we need to get rid of him and replace him next season. As Fructal makes a decent save there, coming low to the feet of the Thun or the Toon striker. I keep saying Thun because it just it, it looks like Thun. All right, I know it's Toon, but you're gonna have to get used to me saying Thun. Several like like Lusan or Lozun. It's it said it, it's spelt Lausanne or Lausanne or Lausanne. I, I mean, it's just all up my head now. I don't know. German Swiss or French Swiss. It's hard. Okay, it's hard. Like I didn't sign up for this. Well, I did technically because I, I chose to do grasshoppers. It wasn't like it was forced upon me. But I didn't. I didn't realize it'd be so hard to pronounce things. I might just go and say whatever I want to say now and just pretend that I don't care. Look, look we've got Gon Gon Goncalco on the ball there. Goncalco, not Gonzalo. Gon Goncalco on the ball and. and Baba. I couldn't say his name. That's why he's nicknamed Baba, isn't it? I'm just, I just struggle with pronunciations. I mean, it's it's probably quite bad on my part, isn't it? You probably all get really cross with me as, as Sukasev gets on the ball. Idia gets on the end of it and puts it in the back of an... Even, it's not even Idia, is it? Like, I'm just pronouncing letters that aren't even there. I know it's Ida, obviously. I'm just trying to be funny and, and say things that aren't right. But that really was quite bad, to be fair. But at least he gets his second goal of the season now. He's doubled his tally and puts it in the back of the net. And that is a much-needed goal, because that's the first goal in four games for us. I'm getting quite hot, though. This jumper needs to come off. It's a black T-shirt underneath, though, so I, I doubt you've even noticed. In fact, this black T-shirt, actually, it's a bit crazy, this is. This is the... If we see there, look. That, this was the limited edition Tom FM 5K T-shirt back when we hit 5,000 subscribers. We're now... As I, as I record this, very close to 14,000 subscribers. And that's that's crazy how how fast we've progressed. And this T-shirt, is, it's old news now, this T-shirt, really. Do we want more T-shirts? Do you, do you want a T-shirt? Because I, I only released this one and then a few people bought it as Paolo Bernardo. Wow, what a fantastic goal. He wants a T-shirt. Paolo Bernardo wants a T-shirt. That's what he's saying. But yeah, if we did a, a T-shirt line again... Would you would you be interested or are you just not bothered at all? I don't really mind either way. If you're not bothered, then we won't do it. If you are bothered, then we might put a few t-shirts out. Probably something similar to this. Obviously without the 5K on it, but maybe just the logo in the corner. Because I'm not really fussed with a massive big design. Because I, I, I wear this out in public. Like, and that probably sounds a bit sad because it's got my logo on it. But like, it feels like it's more of a, I don't know, slightly smarter top. Because it's got a, a smallish logo on there. Rather than being something like massive on the front saying... I love Tom FM, although I'd wear that as well, to be fair, because I do love me. Either way, let me know. Uh, but in the meantime, we need to make some changes in this game because we are playing well. And there's actually something else we need to talk about because I was going to bring Alex Smith on the pitch just then. He's the regen that came through last season who was the best one. Actually, he's a player that I really want to start bringing into the first team next season. I was about to bring him on, but we need to save him for something. I'm not in... I'm literally, I'll tell you about this after the game. I've no idea how we've got to this situation, but we're saving him for a very big under-18s game, which... I, get, I just don't quite understand how we've gotten to that situation. But can we grab a third goal as Aragorn puts out to Paolo Bernardo in the middle? Morandi with his fifth of the season makes it 3 0, wraps up the three points. In the meantime, we're going to take Sukachev off the pitch for Joe Gelhart on the left. And we're going to take Aragorn off for Antasio to play at right back. There is a highlight straight from kickoff, though, which does give me a lot of worries. Hopefully, I want to keep a clean sheet. I'd love to keep a clean sheet. That will give us a lot of confidence. But I feel like Toon coming forward right now are going to score a goal. Although Pusic gets a nice interception there. Paolo Bernardo coming... Look, this is the issue with Ida. He just he just ran away from the ball there. Like, stay in the middle. You're the only striker in the middle. Just sort of stay there, please. Aragorn gets it in. Sukachev, 4-0. You love to see it. It's fifth goal for Sukachev this season, actually. That's a good one. Just a shame that he's just not improved as much as we would have wanted him to. You guys have suddenly turned into the good luck charm. Obviously, I think last season we kept losing a few games when you were here. So, obviously, they were quite camera shy. Whenever you're not here, we lose or draw. When you are here, we win 4-0 after not scoring a goal for four games. So, thank you, lads, for uh, coming along and fixing this for me. Because I was struggling to know what to do. As the clock ticks down, it looks like there could be a, a goal for, for Toon as they come forward looking for a last-minute consolation goal. There's 30 seconds on the clock, so there's enough time for them to score it as they keep hold of position, or possession rather, and their number 11 tackled by Boone. Great tackle that was, and surely that's now going to be the end of the game to seal a 4-0 win. Unfortunately, St. Garland haven't played, but they're playing Lagana. So hopefully that's like a 1-1 draw or a 0-0 draw. That would be great because then it means that we'll stay four points ahead of them. And that's 
more than a game's win ahead, which is beautiful as young boys have just won the title with a 1-0 win over Zurich. Basel have slipped up massively in recent weeks. Young boys have accelerated and they've only lost one game all season, young boys. They've just clinched the title. Congratulations. Enjoy the Champions League next season. So the under-18 news that I need to talk to you about. Uh, I, I honestly have no idea how they've gotten this situation, but it's incredible because... I mean, I don't actually know how they've qualified for it in the first place. I'm how do I find the under-18 fixture? There we go. Right. I don't understand how they've qualified for it, but they are, they're in the final of the under-19s Champions League. Now, I have checked this. This is the actual under-19s Champions League. Playing against an Austrian team as well, which I think is even weirder. Like, how has this Austrian team got there? But this is the actual Champions League. Because if we look at the past winners, look. But Porto have won it. Barcelona have won it. Salzburg have won it. Chelsea have won it twice and so have Barcelona twice and Ben Friedrich got to the final a few times and I honestly I have I don't understand how we've got here or even qualified for it because I thought to qualify for this the main team like Barcelona are in the Champions League and the reason the under 19s are in it because Barcelona are in the Champions League. I thought that's how it works so I don't understand how we qualified for it but I don't think we've played in the qualifying round or, or the group stage for that matter if we go all the way back and we actually filter this by under 19's Champions League we weren't in a group stage at all we just won a few games against it I just I honestly I just don't get how we've done it like we've beaten Monaco and Arsenal along the way to do it as well and Benfica like big teams with good I mean we've literally signed half of Benfica's under 19 that's probably why actually but we have signed half of Benfica's under 19 squad for our first team so like I, I don't understand either way it, it, the actual game is tomorrow apparently so oh well, actually, it's there, look. It's there. We'll see how they get on. So that's exciting. How are we about to win a Champions League? How are the under-19s about... Is this, about this is it, isn't it? We've completed the save. That's it. We have completed the... We've also remained in the Super League as well. That just came up, but that was kind of obvious anyway. If we win this Champions League, that's it. Save completed, because that was one of the names, wasn't it? To win a Champions League. And if we do that, we've we've completed the save it is to, i mean i would watch it but that would just seem like a waste of time especially if we lose and i can't do it oh okay the, the game's passed now um oh we bloody lost it as well apparently no no we lost on penalties to a team from austria you hate to see it lads well all of that excitement was was for nothing i said oh that says UEFA UA for youth league although that's just because i've got the logo pack in I, I mean i don't quite understand this but we'll take it i just want to know how he qualified for it really like, I, I genuinely don't know how, unless, unless, if we look at their fixtures and we actually put all of them back in, the under-18 elite league in Switzerland, right, th this is here, it's a bit of a weird one, you have like a whole league system where essentially at the end of it, two teams get knocked out, and then it goes into a second phase, and then after that, eight teams go through. And then it's like a cup sort of situation. And we won it last season, I believe. We won that last season. So I'm assuming if we get to the final, there's nothing actually here in the final bit that says you qualify for the Champions League. But that, that must be the way into it, surely. That's the only thing I can think of. Either way, we've been to a Champions League final now, but uh, we lost it. So the series has to continue, unfortunately. Unless, unless of course, you want this to continue, then it's then it's good, isn't it? Oh, this is actually quite good news as well. Luzern have just beaten Lausanne in the Swiss Cup semi-finals, which means, I think, that if we look at the overview... It's, it's a loser and young boys final and they are first and third in the league. So one of them wins it, which is fine because that means fourth place keeps the European qualification place. So as long as we finish fourth this season now, we will qualify for the Europa Conference League next season, which is mental. I didn't think we'd be anywhere near qualifying for Europe and yet here we are. Alex Smith doing very well for himself, still playing quite well. We'll get him playing probably against Zurich actually. We'll get him a, give him a little bit of a time against Zurich, although I've just seen there uh, Fructal out for five to ten days. So this is actually going to be even tougher now. Salvi's got to go in goal. He's a good goalkeeper still, but he's not He's not quite up to the level we need him to be. But Smith, he's a, he's a role model, isn't he? He's, he's got a 9.45 in training. He's a top trainer as well in the first team at the moment. You know, you love to see it. He's got to start playing some games pronto. I'm so glad he's actually turned out to be good as well because when you start putting the Patreon names in here, obviously Alex Smith is a Patreon name, I'm panicking thinking, what if they're rubbish? Like, what if they're rubbish and we never see them? But I'm so glad he's actually doing well. Luckily, St. Garland and Lugano have both lost their fixtures, which means if we win today, we will go five points clear of Lugano, which is perfect. That's really good. So I don't really want to change the lineup, but we do have to bring Salvi on for the injured Fructal. Alex Smith currently on the bench. 
Do we start him instead of... No, let's leave Alex Smith on the bench for now. We'll bring him on as a substitute because it is a big game against Zurich. It's a big pressure situation. So only Salvi as the change. We're going to submit that team though. And come on, we got, we won 4-0 in the last game. Can we win 5-0 today? That'd be perfect. Right, then kickoff is upon us in the big derby, the final derby of the season. We've won every single one of these this season as well, which is massive. It's the only team... In fact, Zurich are the only team that we've beaten uh, three times this season. If we can get a fourth one against them, that would be brilliant. They are, though, on a bit of a resurgence right now. They've moved, or currently as we're drawing, they've moved up from 10th to 9th. They're only a point away from Sion. If they, I'd, I'd, obviously, I want them to stay up. I want them to stay in the division they're in, and they might do because they've just scored a goal. I thought that was us. We're playing the black. I hate it when that happens. 16 goals, though, for this guy. Why can't we have a striker? Well, we did have a striker who could have scored 16 goals, but we sold him for 7.5 million. And all you guys in the comments section have pretty much agreed with me. So, I mean, I agree with me. I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing. That I think it's a fantastic thing that we sold him for that much money, but I'd like to have a striker that can score 16 goals, not Adam Ida, who only scores two goals since coming in January. That's just terrible, terrible. As I was saying, though, I would quite like to see Zurich stay in our division so we've got a nice rivalry commit because this game is a guaranteed sellout for us so it's it makes money for us so we have to keep them I love to keep them in our division that's what I'm saying as long as we beat them today first that's fine then they can win the rest of the games the rest of the season and then they'll stay up and it'll be all right unfortunately though we are not getting into today's game at all we've had two shots that's it like what what's happened in a week what has happened in a week for us to go from scoring four goals to this aggressively show me something else in the second half then but we might have to make some changes early on we have to might bring Gelhart on up front instead because let's put another striker on that can't score goals but Alex Smith is also going to come into the fray and start playing a Sukachev on the edge of the area <sighs> gets tackled but that was a terrible terrible tackle it goes into the path of Adam Ida and he gets his third of the season. You've literally seen him score 66% of his goals in today's episode. 66% of his goals this season have come in today's episode. You guys just seem to make things work, clearly. And, I mean, it wasn't even the tackle. It was like a back pass that just went awfully wrong. And Ida just says thank you. I mean, I'm still going to take him off. because It's not like he's actually done well to score that goal. I mean, if he, to be fair, he could have... I mean, Pusic, great goal there, to be fair, from the header. But... It's not like he did well to score that goal. He was just in the right place at the right time. It's not like he's dribbled around 10 defenders and scored that goal, is it? He's still coming off the pitch in a minute's time or so. But we are now 2-1 up against Zurich, which is fantastic. Obviously, the team talk did wonders at half-time as Boone's cross was fantastic. And Pusic puts that one in the back of the net. Is Pusic the one that's six foot six? I keep forgetting this. He's five foot seven. I think it's Sukachev then, if we can click on him in a second. Um, tactics quickly. Sukachev. Yeah, Sukachev's the one that's six foot five. It's ridiculous. Well, it's not ridiculous, but I mean, like for a winger, a winger isn't six foot five. I mean, most centre backs aren't six foot five, so he's he's wasted on the wing. He should have been a centre back, really, Sukachev. But we are grateful for you. As we've got another chance to come forward, Paolo Bernardo on the edge of the area. Hosu, come on, lads, work this into the ball box a little bit. As Hosu gets another chance to do it, as we're just I don't know, just messing around a little bit too much with it. Let's just be a bit more decisive, boys. Ball out to Aragorn's a good one, who puts into Sukachev, who puts it just wide of the post. Now we are going to be taking Ida off the pitch for Gelhart and Alex Smith on for Morandi. Just before those changes there, we might have another chance to score a goal. As Pusic comes forward, loses it to Paolo Bernardo. Morandi, though, on the edge of the area before he's about to come off the pitch. Hosu, go on, have a shot, mate. He doesn't have a shot, thank you. Uh, Sukachev into Boone. Boone, come on, lad. Shoots, saved. Substitutes on, the corner's swung in and it's back to Pusic, he couldn't beat the first man. Ball back across to Alex Smith, Alex Smith, Gelhart, oh the two substitutes could have combined to score a goal there. 30 seconds after being on the pitch, instead they, uh, well, they, they, they've combined to give the ball away for, for Zurich to, get, to, go and score, to go and score a goal. Now I'm, I'm backing my boy Alex Smith there, he put a great cross and it was, it was Gelhart who just messed it up completely and I mean Fructor would have saved that. So back on level terms with zero. I mean, a draw isn't too bad today because we saw other teams below us draw their games. But <sighs> bottom of the table, Zurich. Come on, lads. We need to start winning this game. Uh, let's go very attacking as well towards the end. Shout demand more. Ten minutes to go or so. I'm expecting something big as Aragorn's throw in goes to Paolo Bernardo, who is tackled. They've got a man sent off now. Second yellow card in the game. He's off. We've now got more men than them that's that's obviously obvious um, i don't like to say that also i don't like to say obviously obvious because it counts each other out doesn't it in the 91st minute though sukachev 
doesn't get on the end of the ball. Penalty, please? No, no penalty. Pusic, back on the ball, though. Edge of the area, out to Aragorn. Keep the pressure going, boys. Aragorn, get it. Why is no one out there? Someone get out there in that space. Use it. Gonzalo, on the ball. Aragorn. Gonzalo, Alex Smith. Alex Smith. Come on, lad. Back to Aragorn. In the middle. In the middle. In the Pusic, middle. Gelhart, Sukachev. Sukachev. Oh, it's off the post. Across the line. Cleared. That was the, the moment to win the game. And Paolo Bernardo's free kick is... Also not the moment to win the game, unfortunately. That is going to be that, I think. Although there is a highlight continuing. There's still actually 45 seconds left in today's game. The goal kick's poor. Right, just root won this. Root won it. Sukachev. Look, look at who's lurking at the back post. Poo <sighs> too late, too late. And that is probably going to be that now with less than 10 seconds on the clock. We are in an attacking position, but we've just given the ball away. And that is going to be that. So referee, blow your whistle. Blow, blow your whistle. Okay, now blow your whistle. I thought they were about to score a goal then. They haven't. It's two all against Zurich. We've beat them three times this season. Drawn with them once. It's it's still in our favour, that ratio, so I'm happy. The good news is, though, we are still fourth in the table by three points. The issue is we've only had one win in the last five games. We've got a big challenge now to hold on to that fourth place position ahead of Lugano and St. Garlan. If we look at the fixtures coming up, we have only got four games left this season. We are going to be back for the game against Lugano, which is going to be huge. We've also got St. Garland in the middle of that. And we've also got Young Boys next episode as well. So these next oh, these next four games are huge. Like, they are massive games. And our form kind of points to us losing it, if I'm honest with you. Apart from Luzerne, we might beat them 3-0 again. But other than that... It's not great, that form, is it? So for the penultimate time in Series 2, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have done, please do drop a like on the video. I'd really appreciate that, and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I'll see you next time for some more Hops for Top. Have a good evening. Goodbye.